<laughs> okay, so what we're going to be having a play with today and for the next couple of weeks is having a go at learning different colour schemes. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to get you to have a play at creating a colour wheel. What's it called? Now a colour wheel is, for this particular exercise that we're going to do, it's going to be made up of 12 sections. So you can see here we've got a colour wheel on us. We have our three primary colours. Anyone remember our primary colours? Yep. Red, yellow, blue. Awesome. So our red, uh, I'm saying that one's our red, our yellow, and our blue. And what colour scheme is that called? We just said it starts with P? Primary. primary. Now if you mix your primaries together, what do you get? Secondary. Secondaries. Awesome. So if I mix a yellow and a blue together, I'm going to get my... If I mix red and purple together... Red and blue. I was testing you. <laughs> red and blue gets our purple. And what's our last one I was going to ask? Say again. Yellow and red get... Orange. Awesome. Okay, so then we have what we call our secondary colours. Now, does anyone know what it's called when we mix a primary and a secondary? Tertiary. tertiary. Excellent. And how I remember that is primary school, secondary school and tertiary education. And sometimes you'll hear it called another one called, um, starts with I. I can't remember. I'll have to have a look. But I remember primary, secondary and tertiary. It's very tricky. You ready? Let's try and stick with me. You take a yellow and you take your green and you're going to get a yellow, yellow green. green. Awesome! Well done. You're on foot. Okay, the next one is you're going to take your green and your blue and you get a greeny blue. blue. Then you take your, or did we have this? Red and purple. You get a purpley blue, a purpley, a ready purple a ready orange and an orangey yellow. Now, when I give you your paints, I'm actually not gonna give you all 12 colors. I'm a bit stingy like that. So I'm going to give you your three primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. And then from that, you're going to mix all those other colors. So the point of the task is your color mixing, your paint application, and learning, having a look at different color schemes as well. I actually am going to give you a purple because I've never really found a really nice red and blue that work together and a purple that goes together as well. But predominantly, I'm going to give you um, your three primary colours and then you'll mix all your colours from that. Okay. Now, I'll draw that on the board later and I'll get you to copy that down so that um, you'll have a record of that. But I just want to show you some examples. So, what this person has done is they've created their colour wheel and then they've just put a little bit of a design in the background and then that matches their black that they've pasted their piece on. Next one we've got is they've painted um, tennis rackets and then they've just added a little bit of bling, so put some balls on there just for decoration. Now, this person has done their um, colour wheel, but they've cut this out and then they've pasted it on black. If you want to do that for your presentation, you're welcome to do that, but you don't have to. But sometimes what happens is there's um, your 12 pieces and you get them in order and you're trying to get them in order and then you paint one the wrong color. It's like, oh, do I have to study it? No, we just cut it out and stick it on black. It's nice and easy to do. Okay, and then we just space them out. Um, doing a simple little hand and then they've just put a little bit of decoration in the middle. You can do that if you wish, if you have time. A bit of a pattern. And I'll go back through them to show you the first one. I didn't want to show you this one first, but if you want to put this amount of detail and time into your work, you're welcome to do that. The um, thing with this is this young person had to take their drawing home and do a bit of the drawing at home because I give you a certain amount of time. And then again, when we did the painting, she had to take the painting home and finish off her painting. So um, your grades get a percentage. So if you want to give yourself a little bit of a push with that, you can. Uh, by uh, creating a level of detail. The other thing is, if you want to um, opt for um, uh, giving yourself a push with your work as well, you can add white to your colors. Um, so you have your normal color, which is say is red. If you add white to it, you're creating a tint 
And if you have both those color schemes on your paperwork, that just gives you a little, you can give yourself a little push and give yourself an optional extension work for that. You don't have to do that. I'll try and find an example to show you. Girls and guys, you have your eighth um, two piece of paper. I'm gonna show you how to present your work and this will give you an idea of how big to draw your um, object that you're thinking of doing. Okay, so you need to stick with me on this, okay everyone? Pencils down. Okay, I want you to take your piece of paper and I want you to fold it down so that the line is flush. Now, for some people, this is super easy, and for some people, folding paper is very difficult, and that's fine. If someone's beside you and they're not getting it, give them a hand. If you're unsure about what to do, put your piece of paper like mine, and I grab the top corner, and then I just brought it all the way down. Okay, ready for the next one? Take the bottom corner and it's going to get folded all the way up. That corner, yep, bring it up. Yep, perfect. Okay, now once you put it on your head and we all wear pirate hats, I will know that you are done. Okay, so what that's done is that has allowed us to find a centre point in half of our piece of paper so that we can start to plan where our work is going to go. So what I'm going to do is just put a little cross on that section so I know where my centre point. Uh, girls and guys, what are these called? Protractors. How many degrees are in a circle? How many sections have I already mentioned are on our colour wheel? 12. So how, how uh, many degrees do we have to plot in order to get our spacing nice and evenly? So it's every 30 degrees. Good, 30 degrees. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the center point. Yeah, everyone with me? Grab your protractor. Put it on the centre so that I'm lining it up. I have my centre point here. I have my zero marked on my first line. I have 90 marked on my second point. The next one is 180 and the next one is 270. I'll come around and give you a hand as well and we'll Get it sorted. So now I'm going to plot them every 30 degrees. So I'm going to start at my zero, just because I like to start at zero, and I'm going to go 10, 20, 30. Done. 10, 20, 30. Done. All the way round. Oh, this one. Okay, now, <coughs> not that one. Okay. I can hear you concentrating. It's lovely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the point that I've marked on one side. I'm going to pass it through the centre and I'm going to come out the other side. So point, centre and out the other side. Now the other thing is because this is our rough copy, I would like your lines to go the full length and that will give you how far you can, um, how much distance you have for your pieces. So point, centre and out the other side. Point, centre and out the other side. All the way around. Awesome. To work 
out where your critter goes if you're doing a ladybug. I don't know how many legs, how many legs does a ladybug have? What you'll do is you'll draw your critter and you'll cut yours out a little bit neater because you're going to trace around yours. Uh, I don't have my ruler, but I'm suggesting to work out your spacing that you I'll just chop a bit off the back. That you match your little ladybug up and you know the line passes through your design here and here. Boys, you know where your line start, your design is going to start. Now, if I trace around my ladybug here, if I move it over here, it's going to cross over. So what has to happen so that it fits? Or smaller or, or move, back. move back and you know how far you have for your piece to um, be able, how far it can be moved back on the page but wait there's more what you can do is once you've worked out your spacing you measure the distance from your center out to here I know let's say it's eight centimeters measure eight centimeters all the way around you line up your lines on each of those lines and then you know where your little critter will fit Okay, that makes sense? Okay, have a go. Okay, so girls and guys, once you've drawn your designs on, if you've got 12 images, it's a lot easier to put your paper up over the top and you can trace that. And you can use a light box, which we have in the room, or you can go and put it on the window. So just take the back piece up and then put your tape, more tape on and then just use your window to trace it. Now, the reason I'm showing you this one here is because this is quite a detailed design and this would take a little bit longer to do. So if you have a detailed design, my suggestion to be a little bit uh, quicker with your work, thinking uh, smarter, not harder, is once you've traced six, you can put your piece of paper over the top, you can trace your six, then you can turn your six drawings around, make sure you get your spacing done correctly, and then you could go and do your other six. So you'd have your 12, um, that you'd have 12 that you'd be able to draw. Okay? Done. Okay, so the first point is um, most of you have your color wheel drawn on your papers and you're ready to start to paint. What I would like you to do is on the board, I've put a color wheel to um, let you know what the colors are. I haven't filled that in because you can fill the rest of it in. And I'm gonna start with, can you go over there? It's already, it's already annoying. I wasn't even doing it. Yes, Mrs. Herbert. Okay, so what I would like you to do is, I would like you to label your color wheel. So red, red, orange, uh, orange, orange, yellow, etc. the whole way around. Now, don't put your letters on your drawings because you're going to have to paint over those. Now, even in our last lesson, we had a single lesson, some of the students mucked up their order. That's fine, we just, they're just gonna have to cut them out and stick them on another piece of paper. So it wasn't a big deal. Okay, the next one is how to use your gouache medium. So um, gouache is a beautiful paint and it was predominantly used uh, for people doing posters. And you can see in this one here, this is a gouache painting that's done on a piece of wet media acetate. And then what they would do is they would do their animations on their little uh, drawings. Then they'd do another one with the, let's say the puppy dog's ear coming up a little bit, then do another one with the puppy dog's ears coming up. And they would have thousands and thousands of these beautiful little illustrations to create their um, animations. So that's a little bit of history on our gouache. So your gouache comes in these sorts of tubes. They're about seven, eight dollars each, depending on what sort of level that I buy. So I've just squeezed a little bit of the gouache out. And you can see how I haven't got very much gouache. So you won't need very much. If you need more, then you can come back and get more. Now, you're going to start with yellow and red. Uh, anyone know that? Is that a cool or a warm colour scheme? Warm. warm, good. And I'm going to... Oh, too much. And I'm going to put the lid on. Now, you can see with this, people haven't 
clean the lids when they put that back on and sometimes they're hard to get off so if you're when we're starting to pack up i will encourage you to do such a thing now uh let's say for example we stick our brush in our paint mrs herbert's going on about how awesome awesome this gouache is and we have a go it's pretty terrible doesn't work at all it's not nice it doesn't flow nicely but it's not meant to flow on its own it's actually very similar to your watercolor painting and you need to get mix your consistency so that you have a nice opaque um, level of color so if i have another go can you see the difference in the colors that the how it flows it's much nicer now let's say for example i add too much water it now becomes transparent so you can see through it so this opaque quality is where you want to go for your painting now you have your color wheels on your page so i would be suggesting that you um, have your color wheel and then you test your colors on the side of your page before you go ahead and actually put it on your little drawings uh, next one so you're going to start with your two colors Give that a wash i'm going to try use my clean water to start my yellow okay i'm happy with the color i like the consistency which is nicer and opaque i'm just going to put a little bit more red on there as well so you can see where i'm going now um, that's actually too see-through too too transparent so I'm going to take a little bit more paint, mix that up. Oh, that's much better. Now, gouache is also a medium that doesn't like um, you just, oh, I think I just used my clean water for my, washing my brush, never mind. Okay, um, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. Now let's say I think that's going to be my orange. I'm going to put that in the middle, nice and opaque. And then I'm going to take, oh, mix my water up. Now I'm going to take a little bit more yellow because this is my tertiary color. See how that one goes. And then I'm going to take over here and get a little bit more red in my orange. And then I'm going to do another one. I'd probably make that a little bit lighter. Okay, so before I've actually started painting my figures on my color wheel, I've actually organized my five colors. What sometimes happens is when you start to mix your colors, you are wondering if that color works in that correct order. So just have a look at my eyes, do the squinty thing, and then you do the squinty test next to your colors. And if you find that, um, if I had that as my orange, the difference between these two colors, the value is way too different. So that color scheme doesn't work. And then you can add a little bit more of your other color to work out your balance. Now you'll find with your uh, darker colors, they tend to dry a fraction lighter than what you think. And with your lighter colors, they tend to dry a fraction darker than what you think. So I'm gonna encourage you to um, get your paint out. Please put your paint at the back of the room. You only need a little bit of paint. You're going to have five colors on your palette before you start. Do a little sample and then start to transpose those onto your color wheel uh, you don't have to ask me to tip your water out you can keep going backwards and forwards to do that share your um, watercolor containers but i don't want you to share your palette with anyone i want each person to have their own palette and be responsible for mixing up their own colors because that's a part of your assessment as well